I'm happy to receive questions and uh, I stop here. Thank you very much for your attention. So we should follow the example of Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam. So we see that despite the fact that he was actually uh, dealing with the same people who started this problem, who were you know, involved in the change of the track, but his approach was not you know sectarian or I don't know uh, divisive or even to boycott them his approach was the priority is Islam the priority is unity of Ummah if we have Islam and unity of Ummah then we can also uh, contribute better and we can you know preserve and present uh, the teachings of uh, prophet and ahlul bayn in the way that we believe it's correct so in a context of division and you know uh, hatred among muslims the shia islam cannot grow that this is what we learn from the teachings of Ahlul Bayt and the example of Amirul Mu'minin, Imam Hassan alayhi salam and other Imams. Uh, if you study uh, Aqaidul Imamiyah by the late Shaykh Muzaffar, uh, towards the end of the book, there are few uh, discussions that he has about the approach of Ahlul Bayt to the caliphs and to the majority Muslims of Muslims these discussions are very beautiful so the approach of Ahlul Bayt was first let us protect Islam protect our commonalities uh, look for unity of Ummah and in this context we can also be uh, you know able to uh, build our identity as Shia better and this is actually also present in the lives of some of our ulama we see some of our great ulama who were good leaders who protected and promoted the school of Ahlul Bayt were actually pro unity if you look at for example Allama Sharafuddin Sayyid Mohsen Al Amin Imam Musa Sadr Imam Khomeini, Ayatollah al Uzma Buru Jirdi. You find these people were very pro unity, Sunni Shia unity, but these are the people who promoted the Shia community as well. Uh, so if you study, for example, what Imam Musa Sad did in Lebanon, you would see that no one can say, uh, you know, he was against Sunnis or, you know, um, other you know religions even and no one also can say he was someone who compromised about the Shia community he didn't bother about Shia community no actually he was the one who did everything to revive and to promote and develop the Shia community in Lebanon but with unity approach nowadays even the situation is different from the time of Amir al-Mu'mineen or Imam Hassan because we are dealing with people who have come after centuries and they had no role in what happened even they have many times no knowledge of what has happened many times they cannot even imagine what happened even if it is in some sources, they cannot believe that, for example, this has happened to the family of the Prophet. Yeah, so we should not think these people are, you know, bad people because they are not, you know, thinking like us. They have no information and no expectation of what happened. So 
even Amir al Mumni dealing with the people who started things had the approach that I mentioned, let alone today. So we can be 100% clear about our aqeedah, wilaya, love for Ahlul Bayt, but at the same time, we can be very much pro unity. Actually, I think these two should be together if you are going to have a rational approach and not go by emotions the best thing for us is to make sure that we are uh, functioning within a united ummah not within a divided ummah that we are part of the fight and the majority of ummah is another part of the fight Yes. Uh, in the book Lessons on uh, Islamic Beliefs, I think it's end of discussion about prophethood. Uh, so I have explained this, that uh, the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been to provide humanity with guidance, not necessary guidance, more than necessary guidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does etmamul hujjah. Etmamul hujjah is that he provides us with abundant guidance so that no one would be able to complain. So after providing us with our fitra and with our aql, he also provided us with revelation, with prophets, so that no one can say, Lawla arsalta ilayna rasoolan mundhiran wa aqamta lana alaman hadiyan fa nattaba'a ayatika min qabla an nadilla wa nakhza, as we have in Dua'i Nutbe. No one can say that. Allah has sent prophets and messengers to all corners of the world that humanity existed. Laqad ba'athna fi kull ummatin rasoolan. So, this sunnah of providing not only sufficient guidance, rather abundant guidance, led to having prophets and messengers. We believe that there were 124,000 prophets. Among them, only 313 were Rasul. So most of the prophets just preached what was given as a message to a Rasul. It's not that every prophet had a book or had a you know a special message to deliver. They received the revelation, but sometimes they were preaching the religion which was uh, you know, presented or the Sunnah which was presented by a Rasul. For example, in the time of Bani Israel, sometimes we had tens of prophets living together. One of the tragic things that happened was in one day they killed, uh, some people killed uh, 70 prophets in one day. So, uh, prophets were not always bringing new book, new message, okay? But they were receiving revelation and they were preaching the me last message which was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But gradually few things happened. One was that human understanding increased. Second is that human ability to preserve the message increased. The third is that communication among people and transportation also developed further. So what happened then is that we have messengers whose message reached many nations and remained. So there was a time then that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
sent his final message for humanity which was prepared for receiving this message was prepared to preserve it and was prepared to make it universal after that there is no not need for any new message and there is no even need for profit because the message is there we said prophets many times were needed to preach the message of a previous or existing messenger because it was going to disappear altogether it was going to be distorted or you know lost and also communication was not easy but then we reached the time of khatmun nubuwa the time of the seal of prophethood there is no need for any new prophet message is preserved we just need to carry on with the rest of the tasks of the prophets receiving revelation finished but presenting pure understanding of message and implementing that message in real life scenarios this had to continue so we need infallible leaders who have god given knowledge free from mistakes free from illusions this part we need but to have new revelation we don't need because the quran is complete and is enough for us then even benefiting from imams goes through different stages gradually we reach the point that even without having access to imams we should be able to continue the last few imams they had very restricted uh, communication with people and access of people to them was limited then we have imam mahdi jalalahu ta'ala farajahu sharif and minor occultation which is more restriction for the shia to have access to imam is only through nawab those four people and then that is again preparation for ghaybat kubra so you see there is a wise plan of allah that along with progress of human beings in their understanding and ability to communicate and preserve allah is withdrawing certain things no new message and book no new prophet even no zuhur and huzur of masum now based on what we have learned based on uh, a scholarship based on organization we need to understand how to carry on the same message but without having imams directly telling us what to do so we are like students who are trained to continue even when the teacher is not there and if we show our ability to act properly in this period then we will be gifted by coming of imam ajallallahu ta'ala farj sharif but for something massive imam is not going to come and tell us you know how to be good muslims or good shia imam is going to help us as good muslims and shia are ready for establishing universal justice and peace and solidarity so so we have some general uh, things to observe and then every person is you know unique uh, so you have to consider your personal also circumstances so in general so we all should try to be very good human beings very good you know believers uh, equipped with knowledge as much as possible equipped with you know good connection and belonging to the general community is part of you know shia shia has to belong 
but then every person may have different talents skills opportunities challenges so uh, needs can be different so initially you try to uh, increase your knowledge increase your experiences look carefully around and don't make you know long-term plans at the beginning as much as possible just you know prepare yourself for more general situation uh, and you know look around consult discuss and then little by little by seeing where you can be more productive and where there is great need and there are opportunities so we're considering different factors then choose a line and little by little then narrow it down and then you w would be in the best productive version of yourself okay we don't need to all become the same and Allah has not created us in a you know, same similar uh, you know capacity Allah has given us different capacities different performance what is important is that every person should try to be his or her best version yeah Allah doesn't ask us why you didn't become like that person Allah would say this is what you could have become how much you have reached have you reached 100% of your capacity or 90% or 60% or I think many of us just maybe 10% 20% of our capacity because we have so much that we have not utilized uh, so your question is very important and I think it takes time to understand exactly what you you know should do but you have to prepare yourself the more knowledge the more experience the more you know the consultation uh, reflection help you to help you to inshallah understand your uh, a specific track yeah what we know is that the position of prophethood is closed position as a responsibility yeah to uh, be a prophet is closed there is no prophet anymore uh, but to be great and high in perfection to in nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in being virtuous is different thing it's not that because we are not going to have any more revelation then people are kept uh, you know blocked from going close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no that's different therefore we have our Imams who are not prophets but they are very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what about ordinary I mean non masoom people yes it's possible that someone goes so high that would be closer to Allah than some of the prophets actually sometimes I put it in this way I say uh, some of the, uh, our ulama and you know pious you know mu'mineen some of them if they existed in that time they would have become prophets this is the meaning of ulama ummati afdal min anbiya so if these people were there they would have become prophets and also if those prophets live today they would have become scholars <laughs> they would not have been prophets but they would become your virtues your taqwa your nearness to allah your understanding and this is open everyone based on their efforts can rise and you will never be stopped 
by saying uh, you are now passing for example the level of this prophet we uh, stop you because you should remain you know lower than that prophet there is no class system in a spirituality so you can progress as much as you like but it's very unlikely or we, we can say maybe it's impossible that someone you know passes the level of uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu or Jesus or Moses among uh, people it's very it seems very practically uh, not happening not that because people are stopped no because those people were so much determined and all azm that it's very difficult to imagine that someone would become like Prophet Ibrahim or Prophet Musa or Isa or Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam afterwards although there is no ban just this is the way historically uh, you know we think it's not going to happen but bismillah if someone wants to become better can try there is no restriction inshallah this is then also night of velad of imam jawad salam and months of rajab so we end with dua faraj bismillah rahman rahim اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك توعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا ومن علينا برضاه وهب لنا رأفته ورحمته ودعاءه وخيره اللهم اشف مرضانا اللهم ارحم موتانا اللهم اجعل عواقب امورنا خيرا برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين Thank you very much التماس دعاء